Hello, Audrey. I hope I'm not interrupting your dinner or anything. Do you have a little time to talk? Oh. Hi, Dad. We just finished dinner. Just sitting around watching TV. What's the matter? Can I help you with something? I hope it's nothing serious. No, nothing like that. I just wanted to know what you're doing tomorrow. You and Gilbert are going to be home, aren't you? It's Friday, and I thought maybe you guys might be home. Yeah, Gilbert's back for a meeting at the head office on Monday, so he's returned today to spend the weekend together. As you know, he's assigned to the East Coast office until that project gets off the ground, so he wanted to relax at home for a change. He's scheduled back East on Tuesday. I sort of wanted to see my son, too. Would it be a bother if I stopped in tomorrow? I know you want to spend time with him, but just for a little while, perhaps? Do you plan to come alone? I mean, I just want to know because I would need to prepare lunch. Yeah, that's thoughtful of you. Thank you. And you know, Gilbert hates it when his mother gets too possessive and starts doting over him. She tends to do that. To be honest, Gilbert called me and made me promise not to tell her he was returning. Uh, right. We were just talking about that, as a matter of fact. He also made me swear not to mention a word about his return. Yes. Well, I had to lie to her. I told her I was seeing an old friend who happened to be in town, and that I was driving over to have lunch with him. I sort of feel bad lying to her, but I really have no choice. Actually, I'm really seeing this friend, so it's not if I'm really lying. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. That's way better, huh? I'll talk to Gilbert later so we can get our story straight, just in case. Yeah, thanks. Better to be on the safe side, just in case. Okay, so tomorrow I plan to meet up with my friend in the morning, and then I will head over. Is 1pm or so alright with you guys? Yeah, no problem. I'll have lunch ready for you. I bet you're excited to see your son. Yes, I certainly am. Okay, Audrey. See you tomorrow. Hello? Audrey, are you there? Pick up, would you please? I want you to clean the house tomorrow. And I won't take no for an answer. So, what I want you to do is take the day off and drive over here at noon or so. Please start with the living room. It needs a good vacuum. Uh, excuse me. This is all kind of sudden, isn't it? I already... I said no excuses. You have your car, right? Pick up some floor cleaner on the way here, would you? We're out. After you've done cleaning, I need you to go out and do some grocery shopping. I have to replenish some big items. Case of bottled water and a case of Audrey's soup? I've got a whole list here. And you know I have a bad back, so help me out here, would you? I'm sorry, but I just can't make it tomorrow. I already made an important appointment. I really can't change it. What did I just say? I said I will not take no for an answer. Besides, what's more important than helping out your husband's mother when she's in trouble? You better get your priorities straight, Audrey. Well, my priority tomorrow is that I have an important schedule that I cannot change no matter what. I'm afraid you're going to have to take that no for an answer. End of story. But I'm willing to help you out on another day. But as for tomorrow, it's not going to happen. I'm really sorry about that. I'm just asking you to do a little cleaning and shopping for me for Pete's sake. That's the least you can do for your mother. Uh, mother? Where do you think I live? You're at least an hour and a half drive away. I can't just pop over there and do the cleaning and shopping and pop back home again. It would take the entire day. Am I hearing you right? What's an hour and a half drive on the way? That's nothing. You know what people call women like you? They call people like you foot draggers. A lazy bum is what you are. I just cannot understand why Gilbert even married you. How can you act this way towards your mother-in-law? No matter what you say, mother, I'm not changing my schedule. And that's that. No further discussion required. Goodbye. Audrey, good morning. How are you? I'm fine, Dad. How about you? Yeah, not too bad. Just finished meeting with my friend. I'm on my way there now. I should get there in about 20 minutes. No change of plans, I hope. No changes. Just be careful driving over here. The traffic seems a bit heavy today. No need to pick up anything on the way. We're all set for lunch. Audrey, where the hell are you? I thought you would be cleaning the living room about now. I always knew you were lazy, but I didn't realize you were this much of a good-for-nothing slacker. I waited all morning for you. I never thought you would defy me so blatantly. 
There are consequences for your insubordinate attitude. You do realize that, I hope. The living room still needs vacuuming. And you still have to pick up all those items at the grocery store. The store is not going to be open all night. I want this done today. This is the job of the daughter-in-law. You must get over here right this minute and get to work. I want you here in 30 minutes. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. You hear me, Audrey? There will be consequences if you disobey me. As punishment for defying me and not showing up as I asked. You're going to have to prepare dinner tonight too. And I'm not talking about slapping a ham and cheese sandwich together. A proper dinner. You got that? Uh, mother, are you finished? You were going on and on and I couldn't get a text in edgewise. I thought I told you I wasn't going over there. I have another important appointment that I cannot cancel. I thought you understood. And I thought I told you to give your mother-in-law priority above all others, didn't I? I said my answer was no. And I wanted no further discussion about it. What is so hard to understand about that? You really are one cheeky woman, Audrey. And to think that my dear son, my precious Gilbert, married you. What was he thinking? You were just a deadbeat wife. You know what, Audrey? I want you to divorce my son and disappear from our family forever. That's what I want from you. Oh, great. Just when I thought this conversation couldn't get any more frustrating, you conveniently bring up your husband's absence. Typical, always finding a way to avoid taking responsibility for your actions. Well, isn't that just perfect? Blaming me for everything as usual. I'm providing discipline because someone needs it and all I get is criticism. You should be grateful that I'm trying to teach you some manners. Oh yes, because calling me names is such a great way to teach me. I'm sorry, but I don't see the logic in that. And don't act like you're doing me a favor. It's not discipline, it's just your way of asserting control over me. Control? Please! I'm just trying to make you a better person. You should appreciate my efforts instead of constantly questioning them. Maybe if you showed a little more respect and listened to me, we wouldn't have these issues. Respect? Really? Respect is earned, mom. And you haven't exactly been the epitome of respect towards me. How can you expect me to respect you when you resort to name calling and belittling me? It's a two way street, you know. Oh, listen to Miss Perfect over here. So wise and righteous. Spare me the lecture, Audrey. I've been around longer than you and I know a thing or two about life. Maybe if you stopped acting so entitled, you'd realize that. Entitled? That's rich coming from you. You're the one who can't handle any dissenting opinions and throws a fit whenever things don't go your way. I'm not entitled. I just want to be treated with respect and fairness like any other member of this family. Well, aren't you just the champion of fairness? I can see why your husband is furious. He's probably tired of your constant complaints and demands. Maybe you should take a good look in the mirror before pointing fingers at me. You know what? I'm done with this pointless argument. I've tried to reason with you, but it's clear that you're not interested in listening or understanding. I'll leave you to your own delusions. Just remember, our conversation is recorded, so you can't deny your behavior. Fine, go ahead and record it. I have nothing to hide. And maybe you should play it back to yourself so you can hear how unreasonable and ungrateful you sound. I've had enough of your attitude. Goodbye, Audrey. Caroline, what is wrong with it? What is this all about, for God's sake? I wish you would put a stop to all of this. Why do you have to treat Audrey so horribly? What did she ever do to you? Uh, is that you, Philip? What is this? Why are you texting me? I'm over here at Audrey and Gilbert's place right now. Audrey showed me what you've been saying to her. What is this? A lazy, deadbeat wife? Really? How could you say such things to Audrey? What? You're at Gilbert's place now? Why? Gilbert came back for a few days. Apparently, he has a meeting at the office on Monday. He wanted to spend time with Audrey over the weekend. I heard he was here. So on my way back from meeting my friend, I stopped in to say hello. Pardon me? Gilbert is back? He's home now? Why didn't anybody tell me what's going on here? This is the first time I'm hearing of this. Yeah, of course you haven't. I kept it from you. I didn't want you to know. If only you had told me, I would have gone with you today. How could you not tell me, Philip? If I had known, I could have gone over there and provided Audrey with the discipline that she needs to become a better housewife. Why didn't you tell me, Philip? You want to know why I didn't tell you, dear? That's because Gilbert asked me not to tell you. 
Huh? Gilbert asked you not to tell me. How can that be? Why would he do a thing like that? You really don't get it, do you, Carolyn? Don't you see what you're doing? Get what? What are you talking about? What do I not get, Philip? It's the fact that Gilbert is keeping his distance from you. He's avoiding having to deal with you. Keeping his distance? Did he say that? Then he wants to avoid dealing with me? But why? I don't believe you, Philip. Why would my dear son want to avoid me? His own mother? I brought him up. I adored and doted on him since he was just a baby. I devoted my life to my son. How could such dedication and love not get through to him? How could he not feel the love I feel towards him? That's exactly what he finds intolerable. That fanatical devotion you have towards him. But is it really love? Isn't it just arrogance? A form of narcissism? I really wish you would wake up and smell the coffee. How dare you say that to me, Philip? How about you? What have you done? Tell me, Philip, as a father, what have you done for Gilbert? That was so great. Did you shower him with love like I have all these years? As Gilbert's father, I think I've done what's necessary. I know that I am always here for him when he needs me. And I would do anything for him if asked. Pardon me? That's all? That you're there for him? I could say the same. Well, let me give you two examples of what I mean. The first example is Gilbert introduced me to his best friend, an old classmate of his from college. Excuse me? His best friend? What's that have to do with anything? It has everything to do with it, Carolyn. His best friend, Fred. You know Fred, right? Wait, Fred? Are you talking about that Fred? He's that parentless boy? That orphan? That Fred? I told him not to associate with him. He is not of our caliber. That's the one. You do remember him, don't you? How could he be Gilbert's best friend? You must be mistaken. You know that people like that... Kids who grow up without parents don't amount to much. Well, that Fred that you so abhor, he's currently the CEO of a major corporation. A corporation that generates over $1 billion a year. No, that can't be right. Not that orphan. He graduated from a top university all on his own. Finished at the top of his class, right after he graduated. He started his own company and in no time built it to what it is today. When Gilbert first met him, he told me that I knew Fred would go far. That he succeeded beyond anyone's wildest dreams. And he was right. Unlike you, Gilbert has a good eye for people. He knew Fred would make a name for himself someday. He had no doubt in his mind. That Fred? That parentless young man? He runs a $1 billion company? He's the CEO of this company. Are you serious? And the second example. This concerns Audrey, Gilbert's wife, and your daughter-in-law. Gilbert introduced me to her two years before they even got married. He told me that he was in love with her and was seriously thinking about marrying her. He introduced Audrey to you two years before they got married? That's right. At the time, he told me he was going to introduce you to Audrey right before getting married. As I recall, it was like two or three months ago, wasn't it? He was sure you'd kick up a fuss and would totally reject the marriage outright. Is that why he rejected that nice woman that I was going to introduce to him back then? It was because he was already going out with Audrey. He was already planning to marry her. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. And who was this woman you were going to introduce him to anyways? You know her too. It's Sandy, from when he was in high school. You remember her. Wait a second, Carolyn. That's Sandy? Are you out of your mind? Why are you so shocked? I worked with her at the mall. She's so nice and very energetic and friendly. She would have been perfect for Gilbert. Did you know that their father is a company president? Sandy is much more suited for Gilbert than Audrey. Wasn't her father just some company clerk or something? I never really asked her. You're forgetting one thing, Carolyn. I heard that this Sandy has three kids, and she's not even married, for God's sake. On top of that, they aren't even sure who the father is. And you wanted Gilbert to marry this girl? But pardon me? Where did you hear that? Not only does she have three kids, she's been divorced twice. I heard that her parents are so fed up that they're not even talking anymore. 
Is that true? You're not making that up, are you? I had no idea Sandy had. Everybody knows everybody around the area. Where have you been? I'm surprised one of your lady friends wasn't gossiping about it. Your discriminatory views are apparent, Carolyn. You only look at things superficially. How could you say that? Are you saying that I'm prejudiced? That was not my intention. I'm so glad that Gilbert has an eye for people. He knows good people when he sees them. If we had left it up to you to decide who Gilbert should marry, I'm sure he would have suffered the consequences. I'm glad he defied you and made his own decisions. His life would have been very different. I thought only of his happiness. I thought it was best for him. That's all. We really got off track, haven't we? I suspected that you probably had ill will towards Audrey and probably called her a name or two, but this? Are you serious, Carolyn? How could you call her such despicable names? Like I was saying, this was merely part of disciplining her. She'll never be a good housewife if she's not taught proper manners. A lazy deadbeat wife is going a little too far, isn't it? You come off as a hateful bully is all. Gilbert is standing right here next to me. He's in total agreement. You've gone too far, Carolyn. No, this can't be. Gilbert wouldn't feel that way towards me. I'm going to head home pretty soon. You will be home, I hope. We need to sit down and talk, Carolyn. We need to discuss our future. Discuss our future? What are you talking about? Ten years ago, I was forced to accept defeat because of your reaction. Your total hysteria. But this time, I've had it. There are just too many complications involved this time. I cannot ignore it any longer. Unlike ten years ago, my mind is set. There is no one who is going to change my mind. You can become enraged all you want. Become hysterical all you want. My decision is final. Huh? What do you mean final? Are you serious, Philip? Where did you disappear to for Pete's sake? I want you to reply this second. This is an emergency. Where have you gone? Oh, hello, Mother. What can I do for you? You seem kind of upset. There's nobody here. Where have you disappeared to? Oh, I see what this is about. So you did go to our house? Philip was right, after all. He advised us to move out as soon as possible. I was a little reluctant at first, but he was right after all. I'm glad I took his advice. Ugh, my husband's advice? What are you talking about? No, Caroline, he's no longer your husband. Shut your mouth. This is all his fault. All Philip's fault. He just could not comprehend the love and consideration that I devoted to Gilbert. Unlike my husband, I was always thinking of my precious son. Always. But Gilbert will come around one day, I know it. He'll look back and understand all that I did for him. I see you have not come to grips with what you did, have you? After that harsh condemnation that Philip gave you and you still don't understand? What more do we have to do to make you see? What do you know? You have no right to lecture me. You've only been with Gilbert for three or four years. I brought him into this world and raised him to be the man he is. You will never understand that bond. The almost 30 years that I spent with him. It's a never-ending eternal bond. Uh, it was Gilbert, your devoted son, that suggested that we move and relocate. More accurately, he made the decision to take me to his current place of employment. He put in a transfer to the position back east. He wants to make it permanent and the company agreed. You're moving there? To his current office? Seriously? What about your own job? Did you quit? No, of course not. I was permitted to work remotely so I can work from anywhere now. Very convenient, actually. I see. Well, then I will pack some things to be over there by the end of the week. I don't think so, Caroline. The address over here is not the one you were told. That was a company dorm. We found a more permanent place. What? You found a new place already? Where is this new place? I'm sorry, but I'm not permitted to divulge that information. After all, we moved in order to get away from you, so why would we tell you? You're trying to pull Gilbert and I apart! All I'm doing is obeying Gilbert's requests. As his wife, I have to obey his every command, right? Isn't that what you always told me? I can't believe that Gilbert would never do that. You're hiding it from me. Gilbert will tell me. I'm sure of it. Okay, whatever. Think how you like... I really don't care if you believe me or not, to be honest. But if you continue to disregard Gilbert's feelings, if you continue to deny reality, I'm afraid you'll never see your son again. Pardon me? Not seeing my son? 
not see my Gilbert ever again? There is nothing further for me to say to you. So maybe we can cut it short. What do you say? Goodbye. Wait. And don't cut me off. What do you mean? I won't ever see my son again? Don't you dare cut me off. Audrey? You'll regret this, Audrey? No matter what we said, no matter how we tried to explain it to her, she just could not accept the fact that Gilbert was sick and tired of her abnormal devotion and love for him. Maybe her love for her son is so strong, nothing will convince her otherwise. Gilbert tried various ways to make his mother understand his feelings, to no avail. He came to me and his father for advice after countless attempts to reconcile with his mother. She was his mother after all, and he wanted to settle the matter without breaking up the family. After his parents finally divorced, he sighed with relief, saying to me one night at the dinner table, It's finally over. He finally seemed at peace with himself. My father-in-law was much of the same way, apologizing for making us wait for so long. Maybe if he had had the courage to divorce her ten years ago, all this might never have transpired and I would not have endured such anguish. And what happened to Caroline? My former mother-in-law, you ask? I heard this from a friend of mine, and I would take it with a grain of salt. But apparently she found a young man that looks strikingly like Gilbert. I heard she used up all the money she received from her divorce and used it all on this guy. Last I heard, she was deep in debt. She completely disregarded warnings from her friends and neighbors and couldn't stop sinking money into this guy. She's always had a bullheadedness about her. Once she latches onto something, she won't let it go. Maybe that's why she ended up losing everything she cared for. But will I reach out to help her? I'm sorry, but no thanks. I don't think she would even accept my help. 